Hello everyone, welcome back to Forza Horizon 5 with another Hot Wheels build. We have the, uh, the Gremlin X from AMC. Yeah, this is a weird one. I sort of threw this thing because it's a bit of an oddball. We haven't used, uh, anything like this before. We haven't used a classic muscle car, I think, since the Baja builds, to be perfectly honest. For some reason, I just never end up using them. And this is a, a strange one because it's not really a muscle car. I know it's painted like the 401XR. But this is just a normal Gremlin X, which is kind of awful, actually. So, this has a lot of room to play about with, and we're going to get a lot of power in this. But here's the thing about this vehicle. It gets some pretty big tires. 305s on the rear, 245s on the front leave a lot to be desired, but the rear tires are good and thick. So that is nice. We also shave the weight down. And we can put on a blower. That will all depend on whether or not this goes with a supercharged engine or not. I'm not going to be one of those people. Now, it's also a very light muscle car. Most cars in this era are pretty heavy. This is below 3,000 pounds. And I can make it a little lighter with the Viper V10. I'm going to try that first. Because I think that's going to be the way to go. We'll put a supercharger on it. I think that gives... Does that give us the same power? It does not, but we're going to roll with it anyway. <laughs> now, we're going to want every racing part you can possibly get on this. Desperately, because it's kind of a death trap. It is a 2,500 pound death trap. But still, remember the 7-speed gearbox and just throw everything on. We're actually going to save. I can't imagine we'll need to save that, but just in case... Now, I'm trying to get over a thousand horsepower, I would imagine. I don't really want to put the Aventador engine in it, but I think I'm going to have to. I think I'm going to have to, to be honest. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's, put the, let's put the V12 in. Damn it. I didn't want the V12 because it's... Well, we haven't had to do a V12 swap like this. That's a little concerning that that only gave me a little bit of... Yeah, we're going to take that off for a second. And um, put all the weight-saving parts on first. And actually... Uh, I don't think that's beneficial. Considering that adds 4 PI for nearly 400 horsepower. So we're going to leave it like that. Okay, we're going to leave it like that. I've pretty much maxed this car out, and we're barely... We're, we meet the threshold of 875 or above, but it's not the best. I was curious if that would give us a little more traction. Okay, since we do not have a supercharger, we can't use that, so instead we're going to put that on, because that actually doesn't look too bad. So I, I think that's all we can do. 1,164 horsepower, 850 torque. No, you don't... Know, hell with it. This is a death trap. We're going to make it a death trap. 1,500 horsepower, 1,100 torque, 2,700 pounds. You know what? That's what we're going with. It might not be as fast, but that's what we're going with. Okay. The... Car named after the 1984 cult hit Gremlins is going to have to beat a 142.6 set by the Mercedes that has done very well in the 300 SLR from the Millimiglia. Yeah, I think this is rather fitting actually. That's partially the reason why I chose it. It is um, Gremlin. Sort of demon monster thing. And that's very fitting to describe this car right now. Because it's short wheelbase, which is not great. It's very powerful, which is good if you can keep control of it, which wheel spin actually didn't seem too bad if you can manage it. Oh, that's way too low on the gear ratios. Blew up my transmission there. Um, but it all depends on how you can control it. So you see, traction actually doesn't seem, on my initial results, doesn't seem to be that big of a deal. Obviously, it's not ideal getting wheels spin in fourth, but I can manage that. That's not too much of a problem. The... God, was it the Holden? 
that had so much overseer I could barely control. I think it was either the Holder or the BMW, maybe both of them actually. That was just a death trap. They had no controllability, but they're fast. That's the thing. The thing about these high power rear wheel drive cars is that they're fast. So it's all about maintaining controllability without risking, well, losing performance. So you want to have as much power as possible to go down these straightways as quickly as possible. But you also need to be able to control the car. That was the balancing act that I did with the with the um, Mercedes, is that I actually did not go full power. I, I could have gone for the full 1300 horsepower. Th instead, I think I went for about a thousand horsepower. And this, I did just go max out because it had, t it had bigger tires. And yeah, I don't think that's much of a problem, truth be told. Oh, the problems on the front tires because they're a bit too small. I have good traction, but I'm struggling to get turned. So it's making it look like a bit of a goof. And when you do get it turned, it just, the back end wants to snap because it's a short wheelbase car. Now, saying that, this thing did say it had a top speed about 230. And um, I'm barely cracking 216. Oh, that's good through there. A little sketchy. It's fast through there, I should say. It's fast. Not necessarily good. It's a bit scary. I can feel the back end wanting to let go. Oh, I braked a little late on that one. Brakes are not terrible because it is less than 3,000 pounds with the big old Lamborghini in it, the V12. So that's impressive that it's that light with such a big engine. But the problem is the, the weight, the distribution of it. The short wheelbase and the turn in do, are not a good pairing. I can feel it wanting to swap ends on me constantly. So we're going to try and manage that. We're leaving it in Fifth, uh, stay steady. Not a great line, so they were really slow, but I can't get on the power because it wants to do that. It does not like these bankings all that much. Maybe if I get into a, a better position, it'll like it a little better. I don't know. We shall see. Manage that throttle. There we go. Roll on the throttle. Roll on to it. Otherwise, it tries to kill you. It tries to kill you real bad, and well, that's not ideal. I think this is going to set a pretty good time, though. I think this is going to be on pace with the E30 M3 or the Holden Commodore in that area, just based off initial impressions from this lap. Or I could be completely wrong, and it's either brilliant or terrible. I don't think it's going to be terrible. I think it has too much straight line speed to truly be a bad car. But a 147, admittedly on a pretty dirty run, is not going to be doing any favors. The problem is it just can't turn in. It doesn't, it doesn't have the same front tire size. It only has two, four, five on the front. Which means it doesn't really like to turn. I don't know how I got away without getting my lap time marked on that one, considering I bounced off the wall. But force is weird. I do count during lap times. There you go, that's more like it. But um, I would honestly prefer not to. That usually means something was not quite right. And I just was a little wide there. That's what caused those issues a little too close, a little out of position. Not enough to really ruin the time, but enough that it's gonna cost like a tenth of a second or two, depending on the location. So obviously you try to avoid that as much as possible, really. And nice and safe through here. 170 through there is good. Better than last time, that's for sure. That is just so scary. Sketchy. There we go, that's better. Break a little before the blue line. Still a little late on those brakes. Not quite as good as other vehicles that we have seen. Power delivery also could be better. Okay. That was that was an improvement on the road. It's still not perfect. There's about 80% runs, I would say, in terms of quality. 220 is very good on the straightaway, though. I'm going to show off some speed in this corner, and then turn in. There we go, that's a better exit. That's a much better exit. We can get on the gas nice and early on that one. It's going to be a 146. I mean, it's better, but it's not really exceptional. Right, we're faster through there. We're faster 
through there. We're a little more composed as well. That's good. It's all about composure in this vehicle. We're trying not to be too crazy. We're going to leave it in fifth and a break a little early just after the shadow. A little bit of a lockup from the transition. That's fine. That was a great line through there. A little bit wide from the oversteer. That puts me out of position here, which is going to cost me valuable momentum there. Not ideal again. We have the power. We have the power to just kick it out of that corner. I would like to carry the speed to kick it out of the corner faster, but you take what you can get. Now again, we're going to be nice and smooth, just a little, just roll off the throttle gradually, roll off the throttle gradually on this one. We showed off a lot of speed, but we were, we maintained it very well. That was very good through there. Got on the brakes nice and early. Good. I like this run. I like this run a lot. It's a significantly improved run so far. Manage that throttle, you can just about see it wanting the stuff out. You really got to be fine with your controls. That was millimetrically close. That was very close. Oh. Again, with the understeer, it doesn't really like to turn. Okay, that was a, at the end of the day, that was a significantly better run. We still improved a little bit, but a 45.5 is not bad at all heading into our final lap a little bit of oversteer there not perfect but that's good through there okay all right we didn't carry quite as much speed as last time through the loop but again we're within government so let's just try to be careful don't run out wide and so you can get a nice early apex there and still get understeer. The front tires are just not fast. They really need to be like two seven fives in order to really rival the top tier. I think it just doesn't want to turn in as much as it should. Which is a shame because I thought traction, the, um, the twitchiness of the short wheelbase would be the biggest problem. It's not. The biggest problem is actually the understeer. It just cannot turn. Ugh. Unless you do that, and then it's oversteer. Not quite as fast here there, but still only two miles an hour slower, so I can't really complain all of that much. Uh, on the power, nice and early. Nope, not quite. Stop, stop. Ah, that's going to cost me some momentum. You evil sod. Uh, okay, I mean, it's it's a solid run. I'm, it's just difficult to extract speed out of this car for completely... Oh, okay, I've, I've been it now. I was trying to account for the understeer, and I actually got some good turn in there. It's still not faster. Okay, I thought it was going to be improving. It was similar. It was similar. Okay. Well, I mean, it's it's okay. It's um, I, I, I was... Spot on, it is right next to the Holden Commodore. It did a 45.5. Holden Commodore did a 45.1. That will put it into, looks like, seventh place. Yeah, about that point. And it's a lot faster than the Viper. It's faster than the Lynx and Co. than the, the all-wheel drive vehicle. So, I mean, it has some good pace. But it does not have the front-end grip, which, again, I thought the the snappiness of the short wheelbase or the uh, lack of traction would be the biggest issue but no it's the two four five tires on the front if i had two seven fives or ideally two eight fives i think it would be significantly better but as it stands it is in the solidly middle of the pack with a one 145 539 it's it's okay and I think that's the best way I can describe it. But that'll be it for this episode of Forza Horizon 5. I'll be back with more.